Well, welcome everybody to uh, Greg Dean's Forum number nine. Number nine, number nine. I, you know, if I say that backwards, it turns into something like uh, uh, you know, something the Beatles said, I think, if I remember, if you remember that. Anyway, it's uh, what's your best heckler story? Everybody's uh, hopefully got some kind of heckler story and we can share and talk about uh, what it's like to be heckled when you're trying to do a show and uh, the nightmares that come from that and maybe even the moments of pure inspiration that can often come from uh, having to leave your show and and uh, deal with uh, somebody who has a, uh, well, I always think of uh, uh, hecklers as more of a, a, you know, a psychological social disease that uh, they actually, because they just can't seem to control themselves, so... Uh, Anyway, there's that, and uh, so back to all of us uh, being here and all, so uh, I guess I'll just kind of open it up and say, does uh, somebody have uh, some kind of a, a heckler story that you want to talk about, or you would like to share? I got two. Well, let's start with one, and then we'll bounce around, and we'll get back to your second one. So let's join in with the first one. Charlie, go ahead. Okay, my best heckler story was I was doing an open mic at, um, let me think, it was at Candom. It's a coffee shop in uh, San Antonio. And then in the middle of someone else's set, uh, there's a girl who started, I think she's half drunk. And she was just being loud, and she even got invited on the stage because, you know, hecklers get invited on stage. It's like, if you think you're so good, then you can go on stage, right? And she did, and uh, pretty much it got wild enough that I, I just loved her self-confidence, and I wish I, I was inspired by her self-confidence. Maybe the not to the, the point heckler? of... The heckler's yeah. self-confidence? Okay. Yeah, yeah, like... She was automatically funnier than some of the practicing comics there just because of how much she didn't care and just presented herself on stage. It, it was hilarious. We had a great time. But, you know, uh, some people recorded it and only showed the parts where she's disrespectful. But if you had been there and seen the full thing, she was actually pretty good. It was inspiring. Which actually brings up a really good point for a lot of comedians, which is never challenge the heckler to come on stage. <laughs> because uh, every heckler, usually every drunk has usually one great story. <laughs> and also, you don't want to turn over your stage to people. But yeah, that's you'll find that out. I, I you know, how do you think I know that? Oh, yeah. Oh Practice. yeah, no, yes, and uh, actually, one of my one of mine was uh, this is more like a heckler story from it was the Holy City Zoo in San Francisco, uh, and back when and, and who came from there was Robin Williams, uh, let's see, Kevin Pollack, Dana Carvey, Paula Poundstone, and and uh, Bobby Slayton. They all came out of that particular room as well. And I won't say the guy's name that ran it, but it was a very small room. I mean, it's real small. And but it was always packed because <laughs> oh, I held like 10 or 15 people. And uh, a guy was heckling me. And I said, well, if you think you can do any better. And he did. He came up. And uh, then the guy running the room went, started screaming from the back. What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you? And he came up on stage and took the microphone away from the uh, uh, from the, the participant, the guy, the heckler. And said, so get back and sit down. And he's standing there on stage and starts yelling, going, who do you think you are? I run this room. I'm the only one that says who gets on stage and who doesn't get on stage. You don't get to decide who comes on the stage. Only I do. This is my room. What do you think you're doing? Hands me back the microphone and goes, okay, now finish your show. <laughs> and walks off stage and I'm standing there. That's terrible. That's terrible. Uh, and uh, terrible, so, yes. Oh, so, so, yeah, no, it was horrible. And then I didn't do uh, comedy for the next, I don't know, three or four months. Yeah. 
because it was so horrible, right? I mean, I just went, oh my God. And then it, it, it was a big lesson for me. It was a, 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 you know, about three months later, I thought, wait, I'm giving this guy the power to keep me from attaining my dream, right? I just gave him the power. I mean, he yelled at me, and I, you know, and I was wrong. I probably shouldn't have done that, but I was inexperienced. He should have given me some slack, but... And I'm going, wait, I gave away my power. I, this guy doesn't get to push me off my dream just because he humiliated me and yelled at me. And uh, no, no, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I've got the choice. I've got, I, I, you know, no. And I went back, start performing again. And that was a big lesson, which is uh, when some, something else happens like that, you don't give that power away for your dream. You keep your dream. You go back because it's it's what you wish to do, no matter what happens in a show or somebody jumps on you. You're in charge of your own life. And uh, then you just have to you know, not give them the power, go back, take the power and continue doing what you want to do. So that uh, that was my lesson also with uh, letting somebody on stage. Never, never a particular good idea. So unless it's audience participation on purpose, but that means you've got all these tricks and bits and things to do to, you know, kind of guide and give that person on stage, but you're doing that on purpose. So, uh, you know, well, uh, thank you for that, Charlie. That was a really good story. We'll come back with you. Uh, Charlie disappeared. I don't know what happened to him there. Uh, <laughs> anybody else got a story they'd like to share? Oh, I've, Yes, I've, Jasper, I've, and then we'll go to... I've got a like a it's it's a kind of similar story, but it had happened um, last week, and um, no, not even last week. This week, um, there was a guy in the room where I was performing, who was a what I call a happy drunk, and so he wasn't obnoxious. He was he just wanted to be a part of it, you know, be a part of the whole show, and. Um, and he would he was constantly interjecting with comedians. Now there were two types of comedians in the room. One one who were happy to talk to them because he was a happy drunk and he was he was audience interaction, and other people who just got irritated by him and said shut the fuck up, so to speak. <laughs> <laughs> but it, but along the way we got that this guy wanted to get up. You see, and and the MC the MC said oh he said nah he said nah nah he said. Uh, he said, oh, from what I've seen from you this evening, I, I'm, I'm not going to put you up. And then he opened it to the audience, or to all the comedians and stuff. He said, um, oh, he said, do you, what, what does the audience think? Do you think we should let this guy up? And everybody went, nah, nah, nah. <laughs> <laughs> and then there was one guy who, who carried a bit of influence. He said, oh, give him two minutes. Give him two minutes. And so, so the guy was given two minutes and he got up and the guy who suggested that he have two minutes started interjecting straight away and <laughs> and in a way that he couldn't he couldn't tell his story <laughs> and and to be truthful i felt sorry for the guy who got up because he, he had a good heart even though he'd had a few too many drinks and he had did have a story to tell but and so I felt that we were a bit mean with him, you know? Yeah and, I, yeah. and I should add that he didn't heckle everybody and he didn't heckle me. And after after my set at half time, he came up and shook my hand and said, Oh, really good stuff, man, you know? So I don't think it's all cut and dried with with hecklers. Um You're you're right about that, Jasper, because uh, my experience, this took me a lot of years to kind of really get most hecklers think they're helping yes i mean it, it's really true like you said they're, they're they're having a good time they want to participate they want you know uh th 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 there are occasionally what really vicious hecklers that are there there are people actually come to clubs to just uh heckle i mean to just hinder comedians and do it on purpose they come there to just see if they can hurt the comedian and make them look bad. I mean, they, they come there for that purpose. Those are the ones that are, that are the worst in a lot of ways because they, you know, they're, they're, they're for, they're for malicious reasons. Most of them aren't. They're just too high or too drunk and not realizing that they're upsetting the show. 
And they also, most people don't know that the uh, that they can't do a comedian's job better than the comedian can do it. You know, that's where that old heckler line comes from. Look, I don't go to I, I don't go to McDonald's and slap the spatula out of your hand. Let me do my job. <laughs> so, yeah, you're right. If you have a little compassion, I found that if you kind of just talk to them a little bit. I've even gone so far as to stop the end of the show and explain to him, hey, it isn't helping. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So uh, there there are, you know, the, it's not always like, let's just destroy them. Uh, sometimes you can just reason with them and they'll leave you alone because they don't realize they're being disruptive. They just don't. They think they're helping. They really do. So uh, thank you for that, Jasper. That was good. Tony had a... a Tony was next in his story. Yeah, well, I had a couple, but uh, the one I wanted to mention, uh, this is inspired by something you mentioned, Greg, on uh, Wednesday in Santa Monica, and then Jasper reminded me of another aspect of it. So um, <clears throat> when right after college, there was this comedy club that a lot of us would go to. I went there open mic one time, and the way it worked out is it was a small club, and if they liked some of the locals who came for open mic, they'd tell us, come back on Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Two shows on Saturday, you get a lot of time. It was a great deal. And um, that was uh, how I was involved, you know, in one of the performers. And collectively, we kind of served as the opening and feature acts, about, you know, four of us or so. One night, I think it was uh, Friday, since this was in um, the Gulf Coast of Florida, there were some people who had come to the show that were, I don't know what the appropriate term now today is for rednecky, or maybe I'll just say that. There you go. And uh, had a few and a few and a few more, probably before he even got there, sitting right up front, but in a big party, right? So it seemed to be he was there with his wife, a few other people. And uh, yeah, and he was just like I, kind of like laughing and he'd be commenting on what people were doing. And if he didn't like what someone was saying, he's like, well, no, no, that ain't right, or something. And it was, you could hear him. And people were in the back were kind of laughing at him, but it got to be really problematic. For me, it wasn't such a big deal. I remember one time him saying, well, that boy is funny or something like that. But I just went ahead with what I was doing. And because I was doing something different that wasn't really, you know, directly talking to the audience. Well, here's the deal. The MC who tried to take care of these things as much as possible told this guy uh, what you were saying, that if you don't mind, you know, the people who are performing right now are not professionals. You know, they've uh, had a lot of experience here, but blah, blah, blah. And he got him calmed down. All right. And that was fine. And the person who went up next, who was another one of uh, uh, the locals who hadn't been there and didn't know what was going on. He came. But there was a few guys going. So it was, it was. Oh, so it was a group hack. Yeah. Oh, how funny. Why would they even care to come after a simple little forum like this? That's really funny. I was, I was throwing them all in the waiting room. Only. <laughs> <laughs> all I know is I got materials for a new set. Yeah, I know. I mean, because. Uh... All I know is I can't unsee some stuff. <laughs> <laughs> oh god i don't know about oh, you guys but, but after that i'm moist <laughs> <laughs> so it's you know and i don't want to be I, I you know it's just a, a biological reaction to such things so yeah and and it's okay i mean you know because people like that you know I, personally my thoughts always go to out of millions and millions of sperm, they were the quickest. <laughs> it's so apropos, though, that it comes on a on a on a heck. Yeah, it's heckle. funny. I, I mean, I think it's funny as well. So that's you, you know the whole thing. Heckling. But why would anybody? You know, it's a little bitty stand-up comedy forum over here. It's like we're we're going to spend our life on this planet, um, uh, making sure that we interrupt something that's. You know, if you're gonna actually do something that, that why don't why don't why don't you guys go after like I don't know Scientology or something? <laughs> well, Greg, you told you, you told me how why they do it. You you said it's the power of the power powerless. of the powerless. Yes, that's why some homeless people will sit in the middle of the street and let cars drive around them. 
I mean, uh, yeah. So that well, maybe they object to the fact that I teach comedy and stuff like that. But you know, that's just uh, uh, for me. Yeah. People that have an attitude like that, I, I just find that the the uh, the only thing uh, larger than their arrogance is their ignorance. I think Jasper had a comment. You go. I got, I got a Jasper. I got a different view, Greg. I think they just wanted to be part of the show. <laughs> The question is, which part? <laughs> Most of us do it from here up. Yeah. Uh, no. they were... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, they're, awesome. they, 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 they're teaching, they're telling us to think outside the square. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, you know, the ones I saw, it was outside the box. <laughs> so that it was... <laughs> All right. Well, let's get back to the actual program itself, and we'll add a little bit of time to the end of this to see if we can have some fun here and all that kind of stuff. So uh, from Tony G, there uh, was a... Uh, 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 okay, thanks, Tony. <laughs> so uh, let's see. Anybody else have a... Uh, a well, one of the times I was watching a show and, and uh, uh, some of my students had produced and stuff. And the guy was, uh, it was one of the worst things to say. The guy wasn't doing very well and he wasn't being very flexible. Uh, uh, in other words, like adjusting and listening to the audience and stuff, but he was real new. He didn't know. And the audience, and it was a big audience, 100, 150 people started going, Na 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 na. Hey hey hey. Goodbye. <laughs> Until the entire audience was singing this, and the poor guy was like, oh, yeah. "All right, good night." <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, next on the lineup was. Uh, was was gala so gala had to now deal with this audience and so uh gala i dealt with the audience it uh it's uh uh it's one of those experiences where you just you don't you just wish you weren't there you know you just this is <laughs> it's not what i signed up for you know it's like but this is after, you know, watching the show the whole way and everything and realizing that it, it was kind of interesting to deal with that because I had to let go of my show because it wasn't going to work. And and I had to, I was a headliner that night and I had to decide not to. So what I needed to shift to, and it's because of you, Greg, that when everything's bad, it's like you can't do your show. So what can you do? You know, and that's when I just fall into techniques I know or tricks I know, or things I know that I can still fulfill my obligation, but not be, not be booed because they don't want to hear jokes. <laughs> so, so they were, I noticed that the group was um, coming together against that guy. They came together and it's like, oh, this group wants to be, a, the group wanted to be the show. So when I got on stage, um, I was the headliner. Um, first thing I did was call it gosh, you guys are, and so I called it and then uh, they started laughing at themselves and they were feeling bad, but then they were laughing. And then, uh, but there was a heckler in there that was contributing. She was drinking a lot and every so often she would call out, you know, ah! and she was one lady that was screaming in the corner and she was a part of the group though. So I really, uh, I just said, well, if I'm going to bring the group, it's a group, it was a group dynamic thing. And so I just, uh, I said, well, you guys are with this lady over here. <laughs> so they could go, no, we don't know her. I was like, how could you not know her? She's she she's the, she's the screaming co component of this. And um, so then I decided they they separated themselves from her. So <laughs> which is weird. So instead of dealing with the the people that agreed with each other, I dealt with her because she was even heckling them and the comic. But they didn't <laughs> like her. And I go, well, what's her role in all this? So I really didn't even have doing my show. wasn't even part of the show. Because I just, what is your role? In? What's your name? What do you do for a living? <laughs> 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 Whatever. 
So then I just I decided to say, well, you guys, that's not fair. You can't isolate the other part of the group. And then I introduced them to each other. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then from there, I said, okay, well, ma'am, since you're an audience and you're an audience, let me give you a role since you guys need. And I said, your role is um, I'll do my show. I'll start my jokes and my routine. And then every time I point at you, I want you to go. <laughs> I want you to go. Okay. You said what? It went went silent. Yeah, I, I, I pointed at her and I said, I want you to go bitch slap. And I want you to take <laughs> take your hand and I want you to slap your face. Your <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> I, is that okay? I said, is that, is that okay? And everybody, all the other people are laughing. They were laughing. Yeah. I said, you guys approve of that? Everybody, is that good for her? Is that good for you? <laughs> it just... And she she was so drunk, she didn't really get yeah. the undertone of that. And she goes, yeah, yeah I'll do it. I'll do it. I'm great. I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> so you made it part of the show. She was a part of the show. And I, I introduced myself. I said, okay, well, let's start. I'm My name is Gayla John. And I started doing jokes. And they were, they were just the normal laugh, whatever. And, what next, and they, they were paying attention, though. They were watching me and paying attention. Then I go, you guys ready? Susan, you're on. <laughs> and then she uh, she did it. She did bitch, yeah. yeah. <laughs> really half ass, you know. And I go, okay, that was good. How do you guys feel about that? That was good. All right, Susan, now. Susan, I want you to really commit this time. Really give it a big, you know, do more, do a little bit more. And she goes, okay, because see, you're doing it for the lab, for yourself. And I, this time I want you to go, I want you to make that noise, that noise. Can you do that? Just make that noise. And she goes, oh, I, got, I got it next time. I got it next time. <laughs> so I did some more jokes and I kept doing jokes and jokes and I waited a while. I let it die down. And then I said, oh, um, <laughs> and then I did something. They were laughing at the joke and I go, and for the tag, Susan. <laughs> And then she was, she was all ready. She said, oh, she slapped her face so hard. And then she, her head went, and she bounced back. And then I go, give her a round of applause. Give her a round of applause. And then when I looked, she was gone. <laughs> Where'd she go? Susan. She had left the building. Right. It hurt. And then, uh, then I go, I go. Who's next for the bitch slap job? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody volunteered. <laughs> what? 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 <laughs> and so then it died down, and it just became my headliner set. But it, well, it, no. it, <laughs> and yeah. if I remember that night, you ended up doing two hours. You, right. uh, the audience didn't want you to leave after that. You they kept doing. And finally, you said at the end of the show, was, "I've run out of stuff to say. Good night." <laughs> <laughs> now, now here's a, there's a little addendum to this and stuff. I'm teaching in class next week, and there was a good handful of students at that show. My student, my current students, wanted to see the show, and they came in and said, "We saw the most amazing thing." Gayla actually got a woman to stand up who was heckling and bitch slap herself. <laughs> How do you actually get somebody to actually bitch slap themselves during a show? And they just kept talking about, wow, is that way we're supposed to handle hecklers? <laughs> <laughs> That's why, yeah, there's other ways too and stuff like that. So that was a, that was a, a one of those kind of shows that you uh, have some craziness going on with things. So uh, was anybody in the middle of a story while, uh, when we got, uh, uh, we got accosted uh, <laughs> there, we got, uh, you know, <laughs> you know, I'm about, I've got images burnt in my retina. Right now. <laughs> so that it's, uh, <laughs> it's yeah. I can't unring un that bell. Uh, <laughs> You know, it's so true, Greg, because like I said, I was putting them in the waiting room. And every time I put that one image that's burning in your retina, we all know what that is. I put it in the waiting room, it popped up again, waiting room, popped up again, waiting room. And that's what yeah. uh, 
Steve said there were multiple. So right, they're they're you know yeah, yeah they're 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 it's it's a hack of some kind, and they decided to interrupt this. But you know what? They only win if we stop having a good time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm still having a great time. So you know, we got something to talk about because we got heckled. <laughs> right in the middle of a, a forum about heckling so somebody else got a story uh you want to want to share in some way about uh heckler story hi oh, guys uh, yeah I'll let, uh, lakeisha you got a heckler story well i don't have a heckler story i'm just like i just wanted to say hello to all you guys i'm coming back and stuff like that and um i did i was trying to do some open mics but of course uh you know me i'm the chicken little here uh but uh you know i'm going i'm coming back to class and i think after this one I i'll get my cojones together and uh do what i need to do well just just for that and stuff but that you'll find that that's much easier when you have a show that's the point of being in class and uh, the two things that that help with the, that kind of stage fright is one you know g getting past the, it completely being unknown uh and the other one is feeling prepared I find right. a lot of people actually have a show and they feel prepared and they know where the jokes is and are are and they know how the show was built then they're feeling much more uh, uh, confident and, and better about going and taking that psychological risk of getting in front of people. So feeling prepared is a huge part, which is what a stand-up comedy workshop can really do and, and how it can really help you in a lot of ways like that. So that it's just a, it's one other way of doing it. I don't know. I came up the hard way, which was just forcing yourself to you know, go out and do the shows, even though the, uh, the, the guy running the club screams at you. It was, <laughs> it was those things. I don't know if I so, can take uh, that. Yeah. Uh, Charlie, did you have another one? I do, but this one is, it's it's more like, a, so uh, my Kill Tony video made it on YouTube. And then, um, and then there was, it's not a heckler per se, but it's more like a mean comment. But that one got to me in particular. And uh, that one pretty much said uh, Asian comics aren't funny and it's like Asian food. You only get them when you have no other choice. And for me, like it hurt a little bit. I mean, I mean, to be fair, I, I can sort of see it being true. But in the sense that a part of me, I wonder if it is a lack of confidence in myself or if it was actually true, you know, like that kind of thing that. But then so, I'm being so, better about. But. Well, you know, yeah, that that hecklers see again. As soon as it has this long term effect on you, you've given away your power. Mm -hmm. This person doesn't get the power to push you around psychologically. Is the first decision to go. Wait a second. It's just a, it's somebody else's personal. It's his personal problems, whether he's a racist or whatever, or just trying to yeah. hurt people, right? And they have to, like I said before, they have to be who they are the rest of their life. That's a horrible kind of a person to be. And so, you know, they're inside their yeah. head, that stuff. Now, good for you. You, you know, if you now I always find with things like that, I always I always came back to me and said, okay, what can I do about it? How can I improve me? I, I can blame them, but then that doesn't give me any power. What gives me power is to go, okay, what am I going to do about it? So no, I want to be a good comic so that his uh, statement will become false. Like I well, to be that's some, what I, okay, so so out. let me give you uh, what, what uh, uh, it's an exercise I call uh, a, a thick skin, how to mm -hmm. develop. Take all, uh, uh, actually with some friends of yours or something or other comedians or something, uh, list all the things that, that could really hurt you. Like somebody uh, said something about, you know, you, li you start listing the things, you know, I've got bad skin. People could say, oh, look at his face. It looks like the craters in the moon and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, things like that, et cetera. Uh, Sorry. <laughs> me that I'm sensitive about. And what I've discovered about comedians is that if you take all those things and then you think about them and you make them. You can make them worse. Mm. 
Somebody says, oh, you're Asian. And you go, oh, that you didn't go nearly far. We have small penises. You really got to talk about that. And you know what? We always look like we're, we're in the dark. You know, we're always squinting <laughs> all the time. If you can't no, tell no, the, no, you no, can't my joke tell, for that. <laughs> right. You can't tell when our eyes are open. You can't, yeah. you know, I mean, just every cliche that you can go, oh, yeah, a pan face. Yeah, we do actually take our children and <laughs> smack them in the face with pans so it's kind of flat. It's really what we actually do, oh. you know, and we actually oh. speak by going, kling, 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 right? Yeah. You, you really don't, you really, you, you know, what you just said, it's just, it's so, uh, it's so tepid. It's, it's, you know, if you're going to try to hurt me, try something original or, or, uh, so the point is here is that I've learned about comedians and stuff is you really can't, it may still hurt, but the point is you never let them know that it hurts because you can make it worse. You call a comedian yeah. a chicken and he'll go, Oh, <laughs> Oh, Oh, I get it. So it's something right? like they can choose. It's something like they can choose to attack, but I can choose to get hurt or not. Yeah, and you don't get hurt by it. You show them how they're not very good at it because you're a lot okay. better at putting yourself down. You <laughs> that is can, true. That it, is true. It's, it's, it's actually, a, uh, I call it the Cyrano de Bergerac effect where uh, in, in the play, and uh, he has a big nose, Cyrano de Bergerac, and some guy comes along at some point and goes, your nose is rather large. And Cyrano de Bergerac, and, and also the movie Roxanne with uh, Steve Martin, which is a, a remake of that, proceeds to have this really long monologue about all the way, you know, it's you know, how you could have made fun of his nose. You could have said, if you get a bloody nose, you, you make the Red Sea. You know, birdies can perch upon my nose. You can, you know, I mean, he just had actually very poetically. But, you know, then he, he takes it all much further and much, much more insulting of himself. And then he takes out his sword and has a sword fight with a guy and kills him. So, uh, <laughs> but the point is uh, what I call uh, the, the, the Cyrano de Bergerac maneuver. If somebody insults something about you, you need to say, oh, gosh, you didn't go far enough. No, it, you could have made this much worse. Now it becomes funny because you've got all these horrible things that you can say about yourself. Far, okay. far worse than anything they could possibly say. And it's disarming to people because they can't get to you. Because you, you, you can take it much further. And they're going, well, this person's already dealt with their insecurity on the inside and making fun of themselves. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. So it's, it's kind of, you know, it's, it's a, a, a little exercise if you want to do it. I've had my students do it before that are particularly sensitive and then you can get past it. It still hurts, but then you have a way of dealing with it to kind of go, oh, God, you're really lousy at attacking me. I'm much better. <laughs> Gayla. Just have a question yeah. for Thomas. Uh, hey, Thomas, I just had a question because I, I've done a lot of like, you know, uh, Bur kids birthday party shows where I was a clown and stuff so in the act of being Santa Claus do people say ho horrible things and put you down and stuff and how do you deal with that okay so let me just as an aside say uh I love theatrical performances in the past year I attended 119 theatrical performances. Most of them were at the Shaw Festival, which is in Niagara on the Lake. Um, and I saw Cyrano de Bergerac 37 times. <laughs> so, so, you know, I, I, I have an addiction to theatrical performances. I have two things that happen to me regularly. One is a showstopper because I'm usually mic'd. And uh, another thing is a show interrupter. Okay, so the interrupter is, and this happened to be both when I was performing in Guatemala and in Spanish. So it commonly comes up, so Santa, where are your reindeer? And I said, well, you know, it's interesting you mentioned that because they are, I brought them down here because in Guatemala, there's a special herb that grows in the watermelon patch. And when that's the herb that allows them to fly and it gives them the endurance, 
And what happens is that they fertilize the watermelons and you get these gigantic watermelons. Don't you think that's a great idea? And so that's how we deal with that. The interrupter, okay, is when someone comes to me and usually it's a child and says, um, Santa, uh, my mother has stage four cancer. Can you please help? Okay. Or the other one that comes up is my mother and my father are getting divorced. Santa, can you help? Okay. Wow. Now it, it used to be 10 years ago that we could say, you know, let's sit down and we'll pray. Yeah. And you can't say that anymore because the, uh, I, I don't know what background people come from and people recognize Santa Claus and they come in their hijabs and, and they come with their, with their, you know, um, man bun on the top and they come with their, uh, with their Hindu uh, headdresses. And so we can't say pray anymore. And says, you know, I will remember you in my thoughts, but let's just take a moment and reflect upon all the wonderful things that have happened in your life. Okay. And that you will remember after, you know, a year from now or two years from now. So those are the dilemmas that I have to deal with on a very, very regular basis. Okay. What do you and, say? What do you do? Well, this is, this is difficult. Okay. Like this is the <laughs> ultimate heckler. Okay. This is the showstopper. Because I'm mic and and uh, if I'm in the mall, there's 200 people that are listening. Yeah. Okay? And and I have to not only not sound stupid, but I also have to not offend all the rest of the people that are there. So this is this is a challenge. Okay. And this is part of the reason why I'm trying to find a way to transition from from being a mall Santa performer to a storyteller. Okay. Uh, who does s clean Santa stand-up comedy? So it, it's that's where I'm at today, and I and I'm not certain how I'm going to make this happen, but that's the thought that I have. Wow, that's my vision. That's nice. That's a that's good. I've not seen anybody do that. That's a really really a uh, uh, really good idea. Uh, as it were. So the the first thing I got, I don't, I don't want to say is read my book and get joke structure, start understanding it. And okay. and then there's a lot of different ways to come up with jokes for uh, whatever anybody's doing. There's a lot of ways of generating jokes. Think of a, uh, think of your show, uh, you know, like, uh, like a clothes rack at first. Oh, I'm going to tell you. And at first you got a couple of things you've hung on it and then you keep performing and doing it. Pretty soon you're hanging so many jokes on that clothes rack that it's now a story that's got a bunch of laughs. Plus with you, uh, a comedian has to get five to plus uh, five plus laughs per minute. Uh, every 15 seconds, you know, you, know, you should, be. that's not going to be true with you. If you're funny once a minute or or so, uh, people are going to think you're amazingly funny, especially if it's good, clean material and you're doing the Santa thing. So you don't have the burden of that la laughs per minute that comedians have. So that's one thing to do is to start, start uh, collecting all the little jokes that you have and putting them together, I'm sure you've got a joke. Uh, you've already done some yeah. tonight, a little joke here. But to get them shorter, to get them all shorter and see how you can start to hang those on uh, your little comedy clothes rack uh, so that you can start compiling them together and then learn how to make them shorter and get the, get the laughs closer and then make a coherent kind of a story out of it. Uh, or just start with a story and then start adding laughs to it. But... The, the one thing that I find that is, is it's my joke structure, which is the five mechanisms between setup and punch. That's what's going to help you. Setup and punch is, you know, people call it that. But that once you understand my mechanism, it's a lot easier to learn how to write jokes. So enough of a, of a, of a shameless plug there. So yet th that knowledge is really what's going to help you be able to start to carve up and, and put together a show for that. So that would be my suggestion is to, you know, learn, learn the joke structure and stuff. So you can start identifying where the jokes are and start hanging them on that clothes rack. So you get yourself a nice story. Yes, Gayla. I love the way, Greg, that you teach, um, 
and we teach it anyway. Um, I'm nobody. I'm just a regular person. Um, that uh, repeat circumstances, you know, if Thomas, you find that these are the things that keep happening, you know, you write them down and then those are the things you need jokes for. You talk about that, Greg, you know, even in, even in the club, there's always somebody sitting by themselves. There's always people late. People always, there's always someone drinking. There's always women sitting together in <laughs> circumstances. And you just have like a one-liner for each one of those that you don't have to say it unless you're prompted in a heckler situation. Yeah. Well, and you know, also, like I say, start writing down all those jokes. So you remember them, they come up and you remember them when you're like, as I say, you're in a circumstance or something reminds you, you need to compile them and get them into your computer in some way. In other words, document them so that you can start putting them all together for a show like I said, and start the clothes rack thing. You've got to, you've got to know, you know, can't wait for inspiration to, to cue you off to do a particular joke. You've got to start collecting all those. Jasper, you had something to say? Yeah, I was going to ask um, Thomas, um, I'm going to Santa as well. I was going to ask you, what, what do you say to that little kid who comes up to you, usually a boy with his hands on his hips and, and stares defiantly at you and says, are you the real Santa? And so I say, Oh, let me see. Oh, I haven't seen you since last year. You've grown so much. Are you the real you? And they <laughs> automatically say, yes, I'm me. I said, well, you know, I'm still the real Santa from last year. And I saw you last year when you were sleeping. And that's why I left a gift for you. And, <laughs> and, and, and so and so that's how we diffuse that. But part of the other thing when I am a character I'll, 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 I'll say, so, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm Santa Tom and, uh, you know, I'm 1,835 years old and I can, if you wish, I can show you my antique candy cane collection. It's in mint condition. And then I've got a whole bunch of little things that I can go from there. Uh, as you say, my clothes rack. Okay. So I've got a whole bunch of clothes rack things that I can go on to. Right. And part of that is staying in character. Yeah. Okay, and and so I understand what you're saying, and I've I've you know I, I and I'm taking what you're saying, Greg, and I'm putting those in together, and I'm starting to do that. Now, what I want to do is I want to weave more into into the storyline. Good. So you sounds yeah, like you've got a good idea. What you're doing is develop some kind of an outline for the stories, and then start finding ways. Well, again, if you want to do privates with me or Gala, we can start to help show you how to kind of ways of, of adding jokes into your show, good, clean jokes and stuff yeah. like that. Uh, so that's always, you know, there's a lot of different ways of generating material for stuff like yeah. that. So yeah. that's uh, a way of, of developing a show like that. But I like the fact that you've got this and it's clean and it's for kids because with kids, you can get away with a bunch of puns and stuff like that. Uh, you can't get away with in a nightclub. Mm -hmm. Kids like those kind of, uh, w w you know, when you're asking a question, they're called riddle jokes. A lot of people, you, know, you ask a question, you have an answer to it. Those are riddle jokes. You can do tons of those with kids and they'll just love that. Uh, whereas the kind of pun jokes that uh, in a nightclub mm, audience groans at you and stuff. So you have a very different audience and a, di a different demographic and all. So good for you. You stay at this because you've got yourself a good mission to, uh, uh, you know, keep kids happy. And, and uh, that's really, really great. I, uh, uh, one year I was, uh, uh, when I was living in San Francisco, uh, they, uh, somebody asked me if somebody said, Oh, I, there's a job here as a Santa, you know, I'm skinny and I'm like 23 years old and stuff, but they put the beard and a big thing on me and stuff. And I, you know, and, and, and here I'm this, just not very good Santa, but I was doing my best and, uh, I needed the money. And, uh, I do remember the one little kid, you know, it was a long line of people and this little kid sits on my lap and I'm like, Oh, oh, oh okay. Uh, well, you know, what, 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 uh, what can Santa, how can Santa help? You know, and he, uh, this little kid, just as cute as he could be, a little blonde boy, looks at me, said, I said, what do you want? And he says, what I want? I want 
a big red trier fuck. <laughs> And I was like, ho, 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 so does Santa. Oh, no. <laughs> and the parents all lost it. I'm so... <laughs> And I went, yes, a fire truck. That is a really good thing. <laughs> and just took it from there and turned it all around. But, you know, it's like... Uh, I, I, you kids, I, I admire you because I know that kids are going to give you that uh, 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 that very innocent and naive yeah. piece of information that you've got to uh, uh, learn how to reframe <laughs> and turn back into like a good positive man. Well, you know, now <laughs> mom and dad know you want a fire truck. And I just, you know, so... <laughs> So it's uh, uh, it is that's a, you 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 that's a very challenging thing because uh, uh, all kids are potential hecklers, uh, and never on purpose. So is there uh, any other stories anybody would like to share? Yes, uh, Jasper. I've, I've got two, but um, I don't want to hog the hog the. Uh, Let's thing. try one and go after it. All right, so. I've I've been getting heckled by another comedian for some time, and um, it, we we actually get on pretty well. But his his comedy isn't very good, but his heckling is really good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so so what? I mean, he runs his own room, and I run my own room. He comes to my room, and and I always put myself on early, and then he's after me, and he. He always gets, he always slams everything I do um, in a really, you know, funny way. And 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 when I introduce, when then I when I started introducing him, I'd say, "Oh, hey, this is Marky, and uh, Marky always gets more laughs off my material than he does off his own." And, <laughs> you know, good and we would play, that's good. We would, we would play like that and and think, but it came. He actually. There was this, it came to a point where he crossed the line, not in my room, but in his room. So he got the last, he got the last say because he was commenting on me and I was off stage. So, um, and he, he, he got a little bit nasty. Yeah. And so afterwards I said to him, um, well, I waited a couple of days and while I thought about it. And then I said to him, well, I think you crossed the line there. And he went back and had a look at it and, and his his response was, oh well, maybe I need to tell the audience that it's it is an open mic, and we're all here <laughs> having a go, right? <laughs> so it was a bit of reality for him, but he came he came back with that suggestion, and I said, yeah, that'll be good. Um, but then I asked Gayla, <clears throat> you know what, how I how I might one way what what ways might I um, deal with that? And um, she sort of suggested something like. Uh, Oh, Marky he gets more mat more laughs off my material than he does off his own. Um, Marky, tell them about how you have sex with animals and your upcoming sex change, <laughs> <laughs> which I I like, right? But then then I did a little clown course, a couple of day clown course the other day, and I and I talked to the clown teacher about it, and he said, well, he said what what you could do is when you know when he's giving you you know. Uh, you know, at your expense, get lots of laughs. He said, "You can go up on stage with him, and 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 uh, you know, be proud that he's t he's saying these things about you. You know, start digging a hole with a shovel, and you know, for yourself, and you know, like make it worse. And yeah. and I kind of I kind of like that idea too. So I just thought I'd share those those things. Yeah, that same thing about not being intimidated by it, make it worse. Yeah, so that's making fun you can have with this. Yeah. That's always a good uh, good thing to do. Is that again, anytime you can take the power back, you don't give power to somebody else. Yeah, that's to me where where you're all you know that that you used to also those kind of things. See, confidence comes from making a bunch of mistakes and getting yourself into trouble and things like that, and then working your way out of it. Sure. Yeah. over and out. so get into those open mics or any of those shows and make mistakes 
or find your, get yourself into trouble and work your way out of it. Mm. You see, and the more you do that, pretty soon it's like, oh, it doesn't matter what happens. I'm going to work. I'm going to work my way out of it. And you, that's where the confidence comes in. People say, I want to have the confidence. They don't want to make mistakes. Uh, you know, it's, oh, I'm sorry. It's, you know, confidence is earned. <laughs> it's earned by uh, screwing up and thinking about how you can make it better next time and then handling it better next time and handling and handling and handling all these things. And that's where that experience comes in. What is it? Ex uh, experience, uh, you know, good judgment comes from experience and experience mm. comes from bad judgment. Mm. Mm. <laughs> so uh, you, the one thing you can do always is is uh, just take those risks and jump off the cliff because people who, like I always say, they set their show and they do exactly the same show over and over and over again. Where, where's the growth in that? Yeah, You're not yeah, learning yeah. anything. You're just learning how to repeat uh, yeah. a very specific show rather than uh, what I teach, which is the show's the relationship. So dive yeah. into the relationship and, yeah. and find out what's going on in there. And that's what's going to help you. I mean, Santa, yeah. you can't, uh, yours is all about relationship. You're always, you've got your stories, but you've got to move and shuffle along with the kids and the parents and everybody else. And that's a great lesson for all stand-up comedians who think stand-up is, you know, write a show and just say it. And uh, yeah, that's one way to do stand-up, but I think that's probably the lowest common denominator uh, of a how to do a stand-up comedy show. Uh, yeah. So all of you that, uh, well, uh, I just want to say to everybody, uh, thank you for showing up today. I uh, really appreciate, appreciate all your stories and everything. And uh, thank you. And uh, thank you for putting up with our uh, our virtual heckler. <laughs> and uh you know with those images in your mind i hope you all can sleep this week <laughs> so then everything so that uh so <laughs> personally it just makes me want to make a, a porn hub account <laughs> so uh you thank you all copy. and we'll see you at the next forum uh, uh next month first way first uh first saturday of every month we do a forum so thank you all very much and remember Laughter is contagious. Yes, it Pass is. Pass it on. Uh, right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Love you, Gayla. Great. Thank you.